Kelly and our next guest made good time running from her home. <laughs> Andrea Metcalf. How are you doing, Andrea? I'm doing great. Yeah, I just She's ran even, up here. Not even out of breath. Or just... sweating. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> okay. So we have the author of Naked Fitness. Aren't you overdressed? Well, I have my clothes on right now. It's about stripping away the excuses and feeling good in your own skin. That's what oh. Naked Fitness is about, even oh. though there's pictures in the there book. There must have been some mistake. <laughs> Do you guys well, thank confused? you for coming on the show. And, no. <laughs> No, She's no. giving you the bare essentials of fitness. That I'm bumped. That I'm, yes. Okay. So, talk to us a little bit about naked fitness. Well, naked fitness is, um, of course, it's great marketing to talk about being naked, but it is about feeling good in your own skin. And the first time looking in the mirror, there's a real honesty when you're naked standing looking at yourself. So the book's about alignment, get your body out of pain, lose weight, had a client lose 100 pounds in 90 days, and then went on by himself to lose another 50. Wow. And I've had several clients lose lots and lots and lots of weight. So so you came into the studio saying, hey, there's going to be a couple of clients uh, <laughs> sitting across the table from me. Well, you know, I've got a new TV reality show coming on NBC nonstop, put your money where your mouth is. So, it, you know, I don't know if you guys are overweight enough to participate. How, lose... how overweight do you need to be? At least 70 pounds. I think I qualify. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Eh, I don't know if you guys are quite there Not yet. You quite. Better, better enjoy the, the TV holiday. show, you have to be 70 pounds overweight to qualify? Or, or more. Because you have three months to then lose that weight with a trainer. And they work out with you a couple times a week. We weigh in. And every time you lose a pound, we pay you 10 bucks. So we pay See, you to lose the weight. Our salmon's going to... Put the weight back in. He lost. <laughs> Dave, Just what to get you make some money. Weight? Dave's in way too good a shape. Forty-five pounds. That's pretty wow. good. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what it's about. So when when does that start on NBC nonstop? February fourth on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. So it'll be coming. But if we want a little Andrea Metcalf fix before then. Well, sure. You know, there's so many great things when you think about this there's, year. There's something starting January 2nd? Well, January 2nd, I've got some Twitter chats. If you're on social media, like we all tend to be oh, nowadays, yes. Fitness U, hashtag fitness with the letter U. I'll be helping people who want to lose weight, who want to get in shape, who just need someone weekly to check in with. And uh, I'll be doing that for quite a few months, as long as people are still tweeting with me and I, you know, Twitter to me has been such an amazing social media find. You know, it's it's just such a connecting tool. So I hope to be able to inspire people and get them moving. Now, when you say you talk of naked fitness and you talk about looking in the mirror, I'll look at pictures from, say, 20 or 30 years ago and I go, gee, I wasn't as fat as I thought I was. I is it more in your head or in your eyes or th that we have this image of ourselves? Well, I, I think it's definitely in your head. And men, no offense, tend to like the way they look better than women. I did a survey of over 600 people, and men definitely, 52% of them thought that they always still looked good, and there was a part that they could see in the mirror that looked great, where women, only about 43%, said that they enjoyed looking at themselves naked in the mirror. Just go to the beach, see those old men in the Speedos with the bad hands over They just don't see it any differently. That, that's not a good look? Not you so know, much. I'm not sure everyone appreciates that look. <laughs> as long as they don't put Santa on a diet, I'm good. You good? Yeah, Santa doesn't need to be on a diet. And really, it's about being healthy, right? I mean, it's about having a lower heart rate. It's having low blood pressure. It's about living longer and being able to, you know. I was just out skiing in Aspen, got back last night. And a friend of mine's 73, and she's skiing the bump runs with me. And I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know. 73 and skiing bumps, double black diamonds in Aspen, pretty cool. So is working out? A major component of your life? I think being active every day and leading an active lifestyle is the major component. It's not about hitting the gym seven days a week. In fact, I'd rather tell people walk 10 minutes after every meal. That'll add up to 30 minutes a day, and you're far better off doing that consistently every day than you are going to the gym for three workouts for an hour every week. The, just the long-term uh, findings we're seeing in research with the Cardia study from Northwestern, daily activity is key. And walking is a great way to start. Because you say walk two hours a day. How do you have enough time to walk two hours a day if you tell people to do that? Well, walk 30 minutes before you eat breakfast, 30 minutes at lunch, 30 minutes at dinner, and somewhere get another three 10-minute walks in the day. 
whether that's, you know, getting up in the afternoon to walk outside. I mean, we have people who are smokers that walk, you know, hundreds of yards from buildings, right. you know, and, and people who aren't smokers should be walking hundreds of yards from buildings to, to get that same My exercise. My problem is I tend to walk toward the pantry or toward the refrigerator. I need to, to walk away, is that? You need to walk away or do the push away. The push away? The push away diet. <laughs> push away from that table a few more sooner. Not a, not a seafood diet? <laughs> no, not the seafood diet, unless it's all tuna. You need little kids to chase around. That keeps you active. Oh, that, you have three of those, right? Well, send them over to his house. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> three times a week, send them over. Right. They're for 90 minutes, you know. Yeah, Elliot, there you go. You'll chase them around. That works. That works. I ice skated yesterday with the kids, and I was tired after five times around the rink. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's part of it, getting out of breath. You know, when we push ourselves, whether it's through weight training or through cardio, and we kind of get that overload, like, oh, I'm not sure if I can keep going, that's when we start to develop hormonal response to human growth hormone, which gives us more energy, gives us more muscle mass, keeps us leaner, it speeds up our metabolism. But I think a lot of people don't go to that extra five minutes to kind of feel out of breath. And, you know, five is a very key number. Okay. To me, this is all about getting in a, a good rut. I get, either, I get in good ruts, bad ruts. If you get on the treadmill figuratively and literally, then it's good. It, but to get back on it after not being on it tends to be more difficult. You know, I've had many people over the years tell me, you know, I kind of was doing it really well, and then I stopped. I'm like, you have to think of it kind of like your job and like sleeping. It's just part of who you are. And don't think of it as it's something that I have to do, something more that I want to do. You've got to find things that, that really turn you on, whether it's dancing or kickboxing or walking or walking with somebody or walking your dog or playing with your kids and making that a priority because we're all so busy that it has to be somewhat of an integration or a multitasking idea. So, you know, it's standing up in the studio in between guests and doing a five-minute little jumping jacks. Count those in there. Wouldn't it be fun to do jumping jacks here, guys? <laughs> I haven't done jumping jacks in years. <laughs> I'm well, not sure here's the, an easy one. Similati, I'm not sure that even on the two-story building, I'm not sure the foundation is just... <laughs> just twist your waistline. Here, let's just work your waistline. If we could Elbows do this. Up. Elbows twist up. it. Elbows up. That's it. It's Come like Chubby Trekker. <laughs> there you go. Keep doing it. I want you to do it for the full minute and tell me if you then can start to feel your waistline. I do, I feel. I, my, my back's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not moving uh, your knees too what am I You got to move. Uh, Swing I, the opposite I, direction. Knees uh, to the right, arms to the left. This is like pat your head, rub your stomach sort of thing. <laughs> but it works. It improves coordination. This is going to improve Did you make uh, Matt Lauer do this on today's show? Or? <laughs> I had Matt do some things, but not this one. Uh, how about Al, Diane you what about Al Roker? Well, Al sometimes needs to do a little more of those now and then, but he's looking There's pretty good There's only so now. many gastric bypasses a person can <laughs> oh, have to goodness. lose weight, right? You still have to exercise, and you still have to make good choices. All right, how is that? You guys feel that? I do. I'm out of breath. <sighs> oh. All right, that's naked fitness, Brad. Did you hear it? <laughs> but, you know, David and I are used to heavy breathing, just not this early in the day. Do you work with any celebrities? Um, not as much anymore. Right now I have a couple of uh, clients that I'm helping lose a lot of weight. Um, I see them almost seven days a week, and at least I don't have to travel to Cincinnati for it. So that's, I used to travel to people's homes and stay there. I've got a couple of Chicago-based clients. Who's your biggest client you ever had, if you could say? Name-wise or size-wise? Like, yeah, I mean, which one? Well, I mean, I've trained almost everyone over at NBC, from Dick Johnson to Allison Rosati to Rob Stafford. Um, Dan so Hampton? Larry Wirt. Nope, I did not change. Um, Tony Kukoc I've worked with before, and... Um, Oh my God, Jessica Lederhausen, who's a pro golfer. I've had a couple of kids who have become pro golfers, um, so it's been a lot of fun. It's been so a, lot of fun. A, a video of you with uh, Mario Lopez. Yes, I got to work with Mario Lopez out in L.A. doing uh, an event with NBC and getting people to exercise, getting kids to exercise. Now, he looks in great shape. He is in great shape, but there's Although, a really looks, funny story he, about that. I will tell you. Good. So Mario Lopez has on a velour jumpsuit. Like, that's kind of his signature thing. And we're laying on the ground doing stretches, and he has his feet out, and he's reaching his toes. And I'm like, mm-mm, put your legs together. Put your legs together. And he's like, no, it's easier if I put my legs apart. I'm like, no, put your legs together. So I finally get him to put his legs together, stands up afterwards, and I'm talking with him. like, you have a hole in your pants. You can't put your feet apart. And that's my Mario Lopez story. <laughs> Easy access. <laughs> it's just like, oh, no, put your legs together. Camera's coming. <laughs> So, but you know, the Today Show's been a lot of fun. I've also worked with Oprah.com and written a, a ton of content for the different blog sites. I've Did you train the big O? I didn't. You know, I had a contract with her name on it, but I never got to meet her. I had her signature for, it's like, that was fun as it is. Put it on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, she's a woman 
who, like a lot of people, fluctuated weight-wise. It's, it's like she would make the commitment and the body would respond. And I don't know if it, it was a lack of commitment or just the way people's bodies change over time sometimes well, and the metabolism. I think our priorities move away from ourselves is how we end up losing our healthy regimen or a healthy lifestyle. We start to focus on another area, another person, or taking care of a bigger picture. I mean, you think about the number of lives that someone like Oprah affects. And at some point, that starts for her to thinking about where am I driving this team? Where am I putting people? And the focus comes off yourself. This is really true of moms. You know, we see moms, once they have kids, they start to put on that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, 10 pounds a decade is the norm because we've put our shift onto someone else. And then in your 50s, 60s, you kind of go like, wait a minute, I need to reassess. I need to take a look at myself because you're the only one that has you. And uh, I think at this time of year, um, I used to be one of those people who says, I'm not making a resolution. I'm just trying every day. And you know what? There's fear associated with not making a resolution. I think everyone should renew themselves at the beginning of the year and, and put down some goals and put down some guidelines. And even if it's just, I am going to walk at least 10 minutes every day and check that off on my list, then that's, that's a great resolution. So are we better off setting the bar low? High, medium, or does it matter as long as we set the bar? I think you have to set the bar, bottom line is, and then boost your bottom line by walking and climbing My stairs. Bottom. Were you <laughs> ever overweight? I gained 43 pounds with all of my pregnancies. I have uh, three children, 22, 20, and 19. So um, I never have been like, my fattest was last year when I went on my book tour. I put on 10 pounds going through the airports like everyone else Because it's did. all the fast food. It was the fast food and it was getting up early, trying to catch a flight, go to a television show, get back on another plane, go to the next city. I mean, I did 18 cities in 32 days and did you know, a TV spot in each one of those. And at first it sounded like this is going to be glamorous. Someone's going to do my hair, my makeup. I get to fly all over. I had no time to exercise. I'm exhausted. Okay. Flying's rough on the body. I'm, a, I'm not real good at math, but unless you had kids when you were like 10 or 12 years old, you're p past 40. <laughs> yes. <laughs> either approaching 50 or have hit it. Mm, no, I'm in my late 40s. Okay. Mid to late 40s. So as you look at 50, does that frighten you? Oh, God, no. I've seen some really hot women at 60, so like 60 is probably more my bar of going like, how do you look like that? Um, you know, there's... So many amazing. Wendy Ida is a fitness gal who's turned 60 in May. Shavon, someone from Chicago, you know, Vince's mom, she's in her 50s. And I look at those two and they're like, they're pretty hot. They're still really together. They're and she's beautiful. working out all the time too, though, right? Well, yeah, but Are that's they, part of it. Or Jack, what, Lalanne or Lalanne? Jack Lalanne? Yeah. He's, into his 90s, he's gone now. Yeah, he passed away. But you know, I think that we really, Jane Fonda I got to interview, and she looks amazing. Now, I know everyone in Hollywood tends to have a little work now and then. I was going to say, I nipped in time. But, but, but the work she's had done has been really high quality. Well, it, I, I, she's in good shape, too. I mean, don't get it wrong. She was up there on the stage with the Pointer Sisters dancing for two hours straight and moving. And if you're in your 70s, you can dance pretty strong for two hours straight. You must be doing something behind the scenes yeah. besides nip and tuck. What about Richard Simmons? Did you ever meet him? I met Richard Simmons. He is wildly crazy and hysterical all the time. Is he, he touchy-feely? Uh, not, no, no, no. I mean, he's he moving. Kind of like he's that. moving all She's the time. A woman. He's, he's This is true. He's moving all the time, but um, he he's really a funny guy. Okay. He, he just is always on making funny jokes or something about himself or you know, and he he had on his nylons and his 272 Swarovski crystals on his shirt when I interviewed him. And I've gotten to do a lot of fun celebrities. Gretchen Bleeler, uh, extreme snowboarder, Olympic yeah. medalist. I got to work with Michelle Kwan and ice skate with her. She was a little better than I was, I must what about say. Michelle Obama? I have not met Michelle Obama. I got to work with Rahm Emanuel and see his staff and Lily Chacon and some Chicago people. So how did you get into this line of work? I mean... <laughs> People aren't born saying, you know, when I grow up, I'd, I'd like to be a, a fitness guru. Well, I, you know, I've been in fitness since 1983. I, when I graduated high school, I started teaching uh, fitness classes that were like jazzercise. Some were jazzercise. And uh, then got my degree in exercise science and have just always been involved, creating different workouts, um, you know, blending yoga and Pilates before we had that. And making up bar workouts called Excrema, which then became you know, martial arts, and just 
really having a good time with it. And I just recently sold my studio in the suburbs. And so now I'm kind of doing a different adjustment. How can I help people in other ways besides just in the gym? Talk